This past weekend, I hosted the annual general meeting for the Honorable Cordwainers Company. The Honorable Cordwainers Company is a guild for shoemakers here in the U.S., but we had attendees from all over the world. We also had attendees from many states and from Canada, and we had a fantastic and educational time together. Here's a group photograph of the event. We had just seen a presentation a day earlier about 17th century footwear, and the men in the paintings all had these very elaborate poses that they stood in for their painting. So here we're supposed to be trying to emulate that. I seem to be the only one who's attempting it. I'm talking today with Frank Jones. Frank is from England. Frank Jones is the writer and editor of Pattern Cutting. A lot of you shoemakers out there probably own this book. So Frank, tell me how you got into shoemaking. Um, well, I grew up in the, in the family business and um, I was working at Curtin Eagle Stitcher when I was 11 years old. Oh my goodness. So, um, uh, you know, I needed a pallet to stand on so I was tall enough because I couldn't reach on the I've been there. <laughs> but, I'm uh, still there. Well, exactly. <laughs> it was later on when I got to about 17 or 18 and wanted to learn beyond what my father could teach me and I um, discovered Corbyn's College in London and um, spent six years um, studying there in two nights a week for three hours a night for six years. So tell me who, who would buy this book and, and why would they buy it? Well historically it was written for people who were, who were going to be pattern cutters in factories. Um, the area where I lived in Northern England um, was a major shoemaking area. About a third of all the shoes made in Britain were made within 20 miles of where I live. Um, and um, there was a, a real need for training uh, for people to, to produce patterns in factories. So um, we decided we would try and see if this book would sell. And what we did with the first original copy, we, we, we plastic spiral bound it. And the, the, the pages were all photocopied, the first hundred, hundred really? copies, <laughs> and we, all we printed was the cover. And we sold a hundred copies in about six weeks, which shook me rigid. Mm -hmm. And that produced enough money to do a print run. And, 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 and what you've got now is the complete rewrite of the book, which was done in 2008. And um, it's become the standard textbook around the world now. It's mostly used by colleges and students mm -hmm. and, shoe, and, and hand shoemakers, because mm -hmm. most that gutting factories now is done on, on, on computers. Right. In all the shoemaking forums and bootmaking forums that I'm on, I see references to this book all the time. Everyone who's getting into shoemaking ends up buying this book. What's special about it is, it, in, compared with what you've seen before, is there's 400 and 440 diagrams in that book. Mm -hmm. Almost a diagram for each step of the way, and that was the plan. Right. It was a difficult thing to do because there's a lot of drawings. <laughs> right. A lot of diagrams, but well, that's why. Thank you for providing a really important resource well, for the shoemaking industry. So if you watched the previous interview that I did with Frank Jones, you might have noticed that we have switched positions, and that is because now Frank has decided to interview me. So I'm, I first met Lisa, I think, in 2005, because I was doing some work in Los Angeles running a course, and my wife came over at the end of the, end of the course, and we actually drove across um, the USA, I wanted to see, I wanted to see uh, um, uh, um, a young lady who was making awesome Western boots in a place called Guthrie, Oklahoma, uh, and I met Lisa, Lisa Sorrell, and, and um, I was really impressed with what she was doing, and it was rather special. Thank you. And um, I remember that trip because Paige was about six or six, seven, seven at the seven. time, yeah, she and was. all she understood was that you were from another country. And so she decided that she was going to try to teach Frank and his wife to speak English. <laughs> but yeah, but going back to, to you, I mean, um, how did you get into, in, into, the, into, the, into the shoemaking business or bootmaking business? My mom started teaching me to sew when I was 12. Mm -hmm. And by 15, I was sewing clothing professionally. And at 20, my husband and I married and moved to Guthrie. And I left my business behind in Missouri. And after six months in a three-room apartment, I just got bored. And I answered an ad in the paper for stitching boot tops. I had no idea what that meant, and I've never worn cowboy boots. Just a lucky accident. So that was, that was where you started. What happened then? 
the the old maker that I worked for was an alcoholic who cussed, and I'd never been around anyone who cussed or drank, so it was it was quite an eye opener for me. But I stayed with him for a year and a half and realized all the possibilities in not just footwear but specifically in cowboy boots, all the colors and designs that you could do and I just got hooked on yeah. making making cowboy boots. You're a very different lady now to when I met originally. Yes, yes I've grown up a lot. Well that wouldn't be how I would put it, I would be more subtle than that. Um, the comment I'm, you, you can, when, when I first came here you were surprised that I was I bothered to come and see you. Yes. And you asked me why did I come? More or less. I'm always so flattered when people take the time to visit my shop out of all the places that they could go. And and my, the comment I made to you was I wanted to tell people that I knew you before you were famous. <laughs> <laughs> so there, you have it on video. Frank Jones knew me before I was famous. My featured product this week is a book. This book is called Portraits of the American Craftsman, and it is beautiful. I am so thrilled to be featured in this book. The photographer, Tad Myers, started a project where he was traveling around the country taking pictures of American craftsmen. He put the project on Kickstarter, it was funded, and then it was picked up by a publishing company and became a beautiful book. Here's the first page of the section about me. On Thursday, November 14th, Dale and I will be in Dallas, Texas for a book signing party for the Portraits of the American Craftsman book. The party will be at PDNB Gallery. That's at 1202 Dragon Street in Dallas, Texas. And the party is from 5 to 9 p.m. I hope to see you there. Today I'm going to show you a little technique that makes my boots look nicer and cleaner when they're finished. I'm working on a pair of boots that have a navy alligator foot. This is the navy alligator counter cover and it needs to be skived all along the edges. You can see that, that this navy alligator has a core of white. So when I skive it, that white is going to show. If I didn't sky it, it would still show. You can see that white in there. I'm skiving the edge so I don't have a big thick bump where the counter cover joins the top. I don't want a big bump there. Alligator can be a little bit of a challenge to skive sometimes because you have the, the tiles that are firmer and then between the tiles you have a softer area so if you're not careful you'll skive differently or take out a chunk when you're making that transition from hard to soft. I've got it skived now and this is the top color. This is obviously not the top but this is the top color. So when I lay it on here We've got quite a good contrast going on, but if you're looking at it from the right angle, you can still see that white, even though I've thinned the edge, and there's not going to be a, a ridge there. So the way I'm going to fix it is I'm going to take a navy Sharpie. I love Sharpies. I buy huge packages of rainbow colors of Sharpies, because that way I don't have to buy different bottles of dye. I just use Sharpies for this. I'm just going to go around the edge with my navy sharpie and just color that white middle. There we go, got that all colored navy. So now when my customer wears his boots and he looks down at his boots, he's not going to see that exposed white edge. He's only going to see navy alligator. <laughs> 